Thank you. The night after Super Tuesday, and there are a lot of questions about where the Republican candidates stand on delegates. The AP and Fox News have their numbers. But well, what are those numbers based upon, and how accurate are they? Well, Ben has a reality check. Well, let's start by pointing out that winning states is really not the contest here. Winning delegates is. Last night, during their Super Tuesday election coverage, a number of news outlets have started reporting delegate numbers. Now, remember, the number all candidates are trying to get to is 1,144 delegates to secure the Republican nomination for president. According to, for instance, let's say election 2012 GOP delegate tracker, it's the Wall Street Journal site, uh, Mitt Romney has a sizable lead with 415 delegates. Santorum is second with 176 delegates. New Gingrich is third with 105 delegates. And Ron Paul is a distant fourth with 47 delegates. So where do those numbers actually come from? Well, about half of them are guesses. Let me try to explain where these numbers come from. So far, there have been 20 statewide contests, either primaries or caucuses. In some states, the process is a binding vote, meaning the delegates are automatically assigned to a candidate if that candidate wins a state outright, and if they win in that state's congressional districts. But in other states, these contests are non-binding, meaning the selection of delegates really has nothing to do with who wins the vote. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. But first, let's talk about what we do know. Some states like Florida, they make it really easy. This year, Florida has 50 delegates. They are bound delegates, which means it's a truly winner-take-all. Mitt Romney won Florida. So when those 50 delegates go to the convention in Tampa, they must, on the first round of voting, vote for Romney. Here's how the numbers break down. Romney won seven in New Hampshire, 50 in Florida, 38 in Massachusetts, just to name a few, and at least 13 in Ohio. From the numbers we know, Romney has at least 244 delegates. Clearly, he has the most of these winner-take-all states. The other candidates look like this. New Gingrich had a big win in South Carolina for 23 delegates. Also, his win in Georgia last night gives him 23 more delegates, though he'll likely pick up even more as the congressional districts are counted. Gingrich also got six in Nevada as well. He sits at 52 delegates. Santorum, well, he won three in Nevada, 14 in Michigan, and because he did not qualify for delegates in all the congressional districts in Ohio, it's really unclear how many he actually picked up last night. So we do know that Santorum has at least 17 delegates. But he also won Oklahoma and Tennessee last night. Those are proportional states with 95 delegates between them to be split up. And then there's Ron Paul, who hasn't won a single contest. Nevertheless, he's been picking up delegates. He grabbed three in New Hampshire, five in Nevada, three in Virginia. That totals 11 delegates. He also finished second in North Dakota and Washington and Vermont, which are all proportional states, meaning he'll pick up additional bound delegates there as well. Now that was the easy part. So here's where all the conjecture comes in. Of the 20 contests thus far, seven of them are non-binding straw polls. That essentially means that it doesn't matter who wins the caucus vote because the delegates are allowed to vote for any candidate they choose. That means there are 28 from Iowa, 36 from Colorado, 40 from Minnesota, 24 from Maine, 29 from Wyoming, and 40 from Washington. That comes to 197 unbound delegates. Those delegates, again, can vote for any candidate they choose. So the real question becomes, who are those delegates going to vote for? Well, no one really knows. But the two campaigns with the most organization are the Romney campaign and the Paul campaign. In fact, you've probably heard people asking why Ron Paul was still in the race, having not won a single contest. There are reports from all of these unbound states that his supporters are the ones snatching up the majority of those 197 delegate spots. So here's what you need to know. Santorum says he's not out. Gingrich says he isn't going anywhere. And Paul says that he's winning. That's because there is a lot of race left. About 34 more contests still to be held, including contests in Puerto Rico and Guam. So how far will this go? Well, who knows? But the last time a Republican candidate didn't make it to the convention, already locking up the needed delegates, it was 1976, when then-Governor Ronald Reagan nearly pulled a coup and took the nomination away from Gerald Ford. And he nearly did it by picking up all of those unbound delegates. And that is reality check.
And if you'd like to make your voice heard on this story, you can go on over to Ben's Facebook page. You can find it by searching Ben Swan, WXIX. Uh